we're just at the start of a new year and that's a good time to reflect on the state of things. So for this video, let's just take a quick look at where we're at in terms of Islam and the broader discussion around it. In Australia, there was a poll that went mainstream which showed only a minority of people want more Muslim immigration. A Muslim activist dismissed the poll and did her own, which worked out just great for her. With the Brexit result and the election of Donald Trump, I think it's pretty clear that the loud SJW element of the people on the left are losing the culture war. People are sick of their shit. And I still think of myself as on the left, which is why I hate these lunatics so much, because they're so loud and so obnoxious that people vote against them just to hurt them. But I get it, hurting them feels great because they do shit like this. ACT Parliament passes religious vilification laws, aka blasphemy legislation, making it a crime to offend Muslims by talking about how shit their religion is. This was introduced by this Greens piece of shit. Surprise, surprise. They know they're losing the debate, so what better option is there for authoritarian green fucktards than making your opponent's argument illegal? <laughs> now the Grand Mufti, let's talk about him. In my last video I talked about a dinner he went to, put on by our Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. It was basically full of Islamist scumbags and one of those was Sheikh Shady, head of the Australian National Imams Council. Now after it went mainstream that Sheikh Shady preaches that adulterers should be stoned and AIDS is a divine punishment for gay people, something very interesting happened. The Grand Mufti and the Imams Council doubled down on stupid and supported Sheikh Shady. They said he was the victim of a media attack and that the media was engaging in a type of terrorism of ideas. Yada yada yada, Muslims are victims. And here we have a version of the Waleed Ali narrative. I also feel that it has strengthened terrorist groups and movements. It could also have strengthened ISIL and those who reflect its ideology. Which is essentially a threat of violence. Stay quiet about us being total cunts or ISIS will attack you. It also suggests that this is all it takes to turn our Muslims here in Australia to ISIS. Basically saying our Muslim population are a bunch of ISIS ticking time bombs. Really gives you faith in the Muslim community, doesn't it? I mean, with that sales pitch, it's a wonder everyone doesn't want more Muslims coming here. All you have to do is let them do and say whatever they want and never criticize them or their religion and don't feed them after midnight, otherwise they'll turn into ISIS. And here we see the classic Muslim stop trying to divide us deflection. They should trademark that shit. Do such media outlets realize they are igniting fires, dividing our society and spreading hatred? So there you go, preaching homophobia and death to adulterers isn't divisive at all. In fact, it's supported by the Grand Mufti and the Imam's Council. If you're against that though, then that's divisive. You little Islamophobic bigots. So now that by doing this, Muslim leaders have publicly announced their opposition to secular values and basic human rights, you can bet that the Muslim community won't stand for this shit. They must be pissed. I mean, hearing their community leaders say this awful shit, which is totally against Islam, right? Right? So why aren't they calling for change in the Imams Council? Why aren't they calling for the Grand Mufti to stand down? It's almost like they don't care. It's almost like they're totally fine with it. One might be inclined to think that the Muslim community aren't as moderate as some would like us to believe. But forget them, what about Walid Ali? He's the one we should turn to because he always knows what to say to set things right. I never miss a single rant by Walid Ali because I love being told what to think in a condescending way. And I especially love being lectured about gender equality by someone who follows a misogynist pedophile who was a staunch advocate of wife beating. Walid is a fantastic example of a Muslim who supports our progressive ideals. So you can bet that he's not going to put up with any of this coming from members of his community. Especially since he was at that dinner with Sheikh Shady and the Grand Mufti. And obviously no Muslim has a bigger voice than him. And he has integrity. So now let's look at the clip of him standing up and condemning this Islamic bigotry and promotion of Sharia. Someone's sick. And this is what that looks like. Personally, I think Andrew... Oh, sorry, that's his thinly veiled attack on Sonia Kruger where he goes after her in defense of Islam. You're helping ISIL. No, that's him shifting the blame to Australians for terrorism in defense of Islam. Ah, here it is. Yeah, I was messing with you. That footage does not exist. Of course it doesn't. So why is it that everyone's favorite progressive Muslim has time to use his platform to attack Islam's critics, but stays completely silent when it comes to the behavior of his fellow Muslim community figureheads, despite being given more than enough time to speak out? Let's see if we can work this out. I think this might help us. Hitler is a progressive, or was a progressive. Oh my god, Daz, why are you playing clips of a neo-Nazi? Mate, that's not a neo-Nazi, that's just Waleed Ali on ABC Radio. 
Now, I want you to take a moment just to ponder, just to guess what he could mean by that. I know what it sounds like. It sounds like he's praising Hitler for the Holocaust, but he's not. The actual message is much more interesting. Perfectibility is a utopian revolutionary project. It's a progressive ideal, which is why Hitler is a progressive or was a progressive. What he was trying to do was bring about, he was trying to remake the world in accordance with some kind of perfect design. That's the essence of progressivism, and I don't like that idea. You won't hear that on the project, kids. So he wasn't praising Hitler, he was associating progressivism with Nazism, or Hitler's vision to be more specific. From this you should learn that despite what people tell you, Waleed is not a progressive, doesn't think of himself as one, doesn't like progressivism. So isn't it funny how so many of his supporters think of themselves as progressives? How does that happen? For someone who has strong issues with progressivism, he sure uses their language a lot when he's on the project. He sure seems to have led a lot of people into believing that he's a progressive. I think it's simple. He simply uses what's most convenient for him. While on paper, Western progressivism is pretty much completely at odds with Islam, there's now a push to promote hatred of Western culture as a trendy, rebellious, progressive value, which spawned what are now commonly called regressives. The name used simply out of a refusal to call people who defend and advocate for stupid backward shit progressive. And Waleed takes advantage of that element which has infested progressivism. He's simply a manipulator. For a perfect illustration of that, I want you to look at what he does in this clip. Now what I'm about to point out, a million people have pointed out before, but this is a perfect example. I could sit here and pull apart Sonia Kruger's statement. I could point out that Japan's had its share of terror attacks or that the UN has attributed Japan's low crime rate to low inequality and low gun ownership. I could point out that if Sonia's afraid, then logically, as a woman in Australia, she has a much higher chance of being murdered by a man she knows than a Muslim from another country. And I could do all that with the best of intentions, but really, all I'd be doing is encouraging the inertia of outrage that spins the Gravitron that we're all on. I'd be fueling the same cycle that has led to absolutely horrendous personal attacks on Sonia in the last 24 hours. Yeah, I could pull apart Sonia Kruger's argument. I could use weasel words to try and imply that Japan's had more terrorist attacks than it actually has. In reality, it's had fuck all. And I could also conflate crime with terrorism. But I'm not going to do that because I'd only be feel in hatred, so I wouldn't do that, except I just did. I just did do that, right then. I mean, it should be obvious to anyone with half a brain cell what he was doing. Now, the way he speaks when he does these project talks, I want you to contrast that with the way he talks on the ABC interview. On his project talks, he's not sincere. He talks to his audience like they're retarded children, which is probably not that far off for people who are legitimately fans of the show. He uses a lot more emotive language and even dumbs his speech down a bit, all for the purpose of pandering. You know, on some level, I used to actually have some form of respect for Waleed. Now, I don't. For me, it's simply that Waleed lacks integrity. He just wants to manipulate as many people as he can into buying his message and believing it's a virtuous one. And this is how he goes about it, because he's confident in the stupidity of the masses. Think of him as the Islam equivalent to a sleazy car salesman, only of course he's selling Islam, so he needs to bullshit a lot more. And you might say, Daz, Waleed has integrity. You're just biased because you don't like the way he promotes Islam. I'm sure it's that other guy who writes with him who includes all that dishonest shit. That's why his rants are sort of weird. And you may even be right. It may be mostly this guy. I think this is his YouTube channel, actually. Either that or it's a guy named Tom who's the biggest fan ever of some obscure trash media writer who's also named Tom. Also gets butt hurt and blocks comments and ratings on his videos when it seems people aren't buying the message. But anyway, even if you are right, and it's all this guy, well, he'd sure as shit is happy to go along with it, isn't he? And that shows a lack of integrity. So you have Muslim leaders defending homophobia and blasphemy killings, and the most well-known Muslim figure attacking critics of Islam while not having a bad word to say about any of these cunts. And all the while, the narrative coming from just about every Muslim leader is, hey, if you don't like this, keep quiet. Don't speak up. Because if you do, then Muslims will turn to ISIS, and you'll be helping ISIS. This is the state of the Muslim community in Australia, and I'm going to go ahead and say it's not fucking good enough. I'm not going to lower my standards and accept this shit. People have every right to be sceptical about how moderate our Muslim community is and to be unhappy with what's going on.